Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, March 12th at approximately 4 p.m. I like to call the meeting of the Board of Water Commissioners to order. The first order of business to approve um, the bottom of the bills. And I believe that's in the process. The second is to uh, approve the minutes of February 27th. Yeah. I move we accept the minutes of February 27th as published. Did I get here in time? To... No. Nope, I didn't. Okay. Move, second, and voted to approve the minutes of February 27th. We have two, two appointments tonight. The first one being Keith Hickey, but he is not here tonight. So we will pass on that and we'll move on to Kristen Berger. All right. Thank you. Um, first item is the Main Street Water Main Project. We just received comments back from DOT the end of the day yesterday. Um, so they had a few minor comments on the drawings that we started working through today. Um, more significant items are they want to show uh, the limits of the two inch mill and pave. So we'll add in a couple of drawings that actually show shading on the plan to show it's they, they want uh, for Main Street, it's basically the, the lane that we're working in, that whole half of the road will get paved. Mm -hmm. And then at the intersections, it'll be paving anything that's within the limits of the intersection because um, they don't want where cars turning, they don't want there to be like a break in the pavement. Just a question, does that include all of Brook Street? Um, not the entire street, but just the like into the road, into that the limits that past the apron, basically. The only reason I'm asking, yeah. as you do that, and as you show what they want for you know, repaving, don't forget there are uh, magnetic detectors in the roadway for the signals that will have to be, you know, replaced or accommodated for. So that will be yeah. an item that. You may not have originally planned. If uh, they're, um, are they within the top two inches? I would assume if the the typical loop detectors, they would be within the top inch. You know, Either way, so, yeah, the yeah, wires would be. Yeah, can note that on the drawings. Yeah. Okay, just yeah, just so it's not yeah. an, it's not an oversight. Yeah. All right. That, um, that's one of my old hats. I appreciate the heads up. Right. And then the other thing is the traffic management plan. They want a more detailed plan than what we gave them, uh, which was acceptable for the, what I did for this one was based on what I just did for another permit that that same district could be you know, satisfied with it for this one. So they want more detail. Um, so I talked with Chris and we'll give them some more detail, but we agreed that we'll just keep it to um, one lane traffic. We're not going to show road closures at those three spots where we're crossing the road. Mm -hmm. So we'll just keep this simple and say it's going to be one lane traffic and we'll show they want to see the specific signs on the drawing rather than we had done a little like a numbered code mm -hmm. thing and then refer back to their standard detail for the spacing of the signs. They want us to show on the drawing, what the actual sign is. So road closure, police detail. Um, well, you just do me a favor because I seen it just recently on Route 3 as they're doing some cable work up towards Stop and Shop. They put these beautiful signs that say uh, lane change. Of course, they put it on the sidewalk. So if you're a handicapped or uh, uh, you know, <laughs> walking with, you know, a, you know Child and carriage, yeah. you can't go up the sidewalk. So whatever yeah. you do, if you're showing that, make sure that it's post mounted high enough up so that we're not interfering with potentially people going to or from school right. in particular. Yeah, yeah, they have to keep the sidewalk successful. <laughs> they don't up there. Yeah, that's and, bad. And do they give you any indication on minimum or maximum number of officers of the law that? Supposedly, no, supposedly they, watch the trench yeah, they instead of the track. They won't tell you how many police details you need as part of the DOT review. They'll just say, you know, you have to have police details. And that's what we'll have to work out with the police department. You might want to check and find out whether they'll allow civilians to replace non-local police officers. They 
They will if they if they don't commit by like the end of the close of business or a little bit ahead of close of business um, to having the police detail out there for the following day, then you can get back to the contract again. Beyond we, that, we will leave it at that. I don't yeah. want to get in too much trouble. Beyond that, they won't say you know one or the other. So we could have had a, they could have had a card table up here today. Yeah. And, and yesterday. There will be a significant presence, I'm sure, on, on this card. More than necessary. Um, but safety's first. So um, so we're working through those comments. My hope is that we'll have a revised set to resubmit to them by Friday. Uh, my draftsman's on vacation next week. So that would give me next week to be able to print it out, take a good look at it myself, kind of concurrent to DOT before we get ready to get put it out to bid. Um, so in your packet, Stacy and I included this schedule that we've talked about before. Mm -hmm. And I gave you a March and April calendar because I find it helpful to look at that in that respect. But basically, we were hoping to get the 25% comments back from DOT by March 9th, and we got them on the 11th, so not too many days back. We're aiming to get back uh, responses by this Friday, the 15th. Um, we probably won't get DOT approval by April 1st, but maybe like by April 15th, you know, if we give them a month, maybe we'll get them in before the bids are due. So this still has us on schedule for being able to advertise on April 3rd, and then have bids due on April 24th. So if, if you find it helpful to look at the calendar instead, I included that here. So Wednesday the 3rd is what we'd be looking at for having the ad, and that's when the documents would be made available to plan holders. And then we give three weeks for them to pull together their bids and have those due on April 24th. So that, that still seems feasible. Any questions about that? Um, so once we get to the end of this week, I'll have a better feel for where we are with those drawings. And if it seems like, okay, they're in good shape, we'll only have minor comments to do. My guys on vacation next week, that's the 18th. So we'll get final edits done the last week of March, which still gives yeah. us time ahead of that April 3rd deadline. So I, I think yeah. that's a real good number. Um, so if that's the case, we want to be able to submit the ads to um, its, its central register and then also palm bars in the newspaper. That would have to get submitted by around March 27th. Then show up in the following week. So I'll work with Chris and Stacy to figure out you know, how we can achieve that over the next couple of weeks with the, the townhouse. Okay. I can take care of the central register at it, just the other two that we need them to contribute. It's good to hear that we're basically on schedule as this point. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, a day or two is one thing. Right. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. It was good to see those comments come back yeah. and um, not, not too bad. Mm. So any, any questions about the Main Street project? Um, the other project is the, the Water Management Act grant project. So that's the one we're looking at, um, kind of the, the capital, somewhat a capital plan, but not, not looking at water management. So we're focused on new source and water storage tank. So uh, this plan right here is showing um, your past test well sites and this is actually quite impressive. How old is that map? What sorry? How old is that map? Oh uh we just looked at it. Oh okay. <laughs> it's brand new. Yeah, it's brand new. It's I, yeah. I hadn't seen it before. <laughs> we prepared it for this yeah, project. 
So it's showing um, different soil types for, um, you know, the cranberry bogs versus sand and gravel material. Uh, we're showing the location of the old test wells that were done back in the 70s. And then the, the two that were done in 2018 down by the Kilher property. Uh, the double line red parcels are town owned undeveloped land. The double line black parcels are town owned de um, developed. So for example, this parcel right here, that's where your Indian corn tank is. So it's considered a developed parcel. And then the green hash marked are conservation land. So some of those are town owned and some of them are not town owned. So just in terms of, like, you know, in the future where potential test well work could happen, uh, that's where this map is somewhat helpful towards looking at that. If there's existing town owned uh, conservation lands that could be explored as is it like legally, is there any ability to put a well on it? Or is there some change to the restriction that needs to be made to be able to put a well on it? Uh, that's what this is kind of useful for. So I was looking at this parcel here that's down south of the Chapel Pond site. That used to be owned by the state. When we looked at that, whatever it was, almost 10 years ago, eight years ago, maybe, for test well, potential test well sites out in that area, it was Commonwealth of Massachusetts owned. And with it being conservation land, it was one of those like, oh, they don't, they don't allow it to get used for wells. But now it shows up as owned by the town of Kingston. So maybe that could be something in the future. Is there something that prevents us from putting a, a water tank on one hill? I mean, on um, something like, where's it, where are you? On one hill. Yeah. This area right here is um, basically yeah. the, the elevation line seems hatched. to be it perfect. Is. What's the dark zone? It's in the high zone. Yeah, it's like more rain that comes from there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, even we're looking for. Tank sites, we're at, I have a different map, but uh, we're looking right now at three sites. The existing Indian Pond tank site might not be a great site, but it's one of three. This property right here, um, the town just is doing some leaching pits in this parcel up to this point, and this is still available. So, and there's a high spot on here. Um, and then we were also looking at, could we squeeze something out over here? Um, just in terms of town stuff. Uh, yeah, sense. that would there, you know, I can include that. Because you've already got the you already got elevation, it's yep. in the high zone. I mean it seems to me to cover everything. Yep, yeah, yeah. Except, except we don't know except we don't have any town water anyway. Right. Yeah. Water extension down that way. Yeah. And the and the disadvantage is you're now bringing young um part of the water along you know, that section of the roadway, which makes it that much more desirable as far as you know, Development. So, yeah, development. Yeah. so there, there are there are trade offs. Yeah, you know, and why you might. The other question is whether well, Mont Hill is actually too high, so the elevation of tanks are basically not consistent to our town. We'll take a look at it though as another site, because even if it's well, it's not as desirable because of the additional expense to bring dock. But it's found on property, so you don't have to purchase it. That's one of the things I thought about. Okay. At least in the initial analysis, that's fine. Well, one of the big advantages of the power from the Chris and referencing uh, on the back side of the yeah. you know, leach fields, so yes, mm -hmm. there is it. You're right, kind of central in the high zone. Um, mm -hmm. and there is access to the high zone pipes, you know, with close proximity without having to do there. Extensive, extensive, yeah. I mean, it's, and that's town on property, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, where is that? Where is that? Back? Right there in the Indian Pond, I still leaching fields. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the back, it's yeah, over by the Davis property, 
it would be in between where the wastewater would build in the new beach field and the old uh, office does. Gotcha. Yeah, we were looking at the, the contours to that location, um, and there's a high spot of around 150 feet. Um, we need to have an overflow about 281 feet. So it would be an elevated tank that you'd be looking at at that point, with it being 130 feet tall. That's too tall to have a stand height. So it'd be similar to Pembroke Street, or if it was a smaller volume, um, it could be a slightly different style. But yep. just a general question: If in fact we're going to ask the town residents to pay for uh, a new tank to build something a little bit smaller, so we can save a few bucks, probably is not in the best interest of the town in the long term. You know, if we're to build a tank. Whatever the elevation is, we ought to be doing it to look towards the future more than just the height and location. Okay, yeah. My opinion. Yeah. Look, looking at the, the heights, I always thought water tanks were best as high as they could be, but they need to be relatively equal. Yes. Is there just hydraulic pressure that will sink to some level? Yeah. What's the yeah, hydraulic gray line would be needed across that? Yeah. All if right. you built the tank higher, it just would be empty at the top. Okay. So more similar to the other ones in town. So just yeah. put things in comparison, if you look at Smith's Lane water tank, mm -hmm. the overflow for that is the same elevation overflow with the Federal Street water tank by the high school. But if a town has just one water tank, high is fine, because that's just the one. It's only if you have multiple ones that this is an issue. Yeah, well, um, multiple ones in the same pressure zone. Oh, so like, I'm always imagine water tanks on, on the big Sticks or the uh, stands they have, like flat areas. That's right. Yeah, and you could, you just, um, you'd end up having to have a booster pump to fill it, and it mm -hmm. would be kind of somewhat, it would be a separate pressure zone at that point okay. that you'd have to create for it. Uh, all right, I think I get a little more. Okay. So. so, but I'll take a look, a closer look at what's going on over there with the topography, you know, just, and then if it's something that, Gets ruled out, we'll at least have a paper trail on. We considered it and it wasn't as desirable. Who actually owns the fire tower? Is that on oh, here? Look at this. This is, this is town conservation stuff. This is right here in this green hashed area. So but it's because I know the, the town, the state forest is over here on the west side um, or southwest side. Right? But yeah, this is all marked as town. I, I think. Thought this the fire tower was one of the people of the uh city. It's not is that green or is it outlined? It would be literally right up in here. Yes, that is town owned. It's science, you know, state property. I don't know if yeah. the state has an agreement with the town to be yeah. Good night. Good night. Uh, the other thing we've been working on concurrently is building the rate model. So Stacy gave me a bunch of data, and I was able to pull that in and start developing the model um, based on the 2014 rates because that's what the data used. And that's been now calibrated against that data within zero to two percent of what the the revenue was. So that's pretty accurate. There's some you know, differences that get done separately, Stacy was mentioning when closings are done, um, different accounts pay for part of the service fee. So the model doesn't account for that, but it's not worth worrying about when you're talking about less than 2% difference, you know, like the total fillings. So once we get an understanding of what we're looking at for potential projects between uh, new well and new tank, we'll know how much additional revenue might be needed down the road. And then we can use the model to say, what would that do to the rates? And the model will be set up to also um, figure out how does that impact a customer's bill? You know, if they're a median customer or if they're like a, a low water using customer or a high water using customer. So there'll be some good information that comes from that. And we'll we'll have a separate presentation once we get to that point. So that's moving forward well. And uh, that's what we have. Yes, they're very busy.
Yeah. Any questions on the Well, projects? thanks for eating our food anyway. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you, Kristen. All right, you're welcome. I guess we'll move on to uh, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been working, getting the information done to get the annual, annual statistical report together to submit that to DEP. That's uh, through the beginning of, of April. So, quite a bit of leg work to be done with that, but making good progress with that. Um, and we've been trying to work on the um, film on that film informant position that was vacated. Um, we've got one application uh, from a person that is doesn't possess all the current required licenses. So I've been in talks with uh, HR and how we can take and try and get this individual in to uh, work as a more entry level position. Uh, so I talked to very length with HR to see what kind of plan we can formulate with that. Uh, they did an interview the the um, candidate interviewed very well as um, you know great experience and knowledge of you know, water repairs and digging and street work and the like. Um, he currently possesses a distribution one license. Uh, he's ready to test for his distribution two license and is uh, looking to get an individual class for a treatment license. So, see back. He wanted a week or two to see how he does with his test for the D2 license and then come back and talk to us. So, that's, that's the update we're trying to fill that. It'd be good to. I think you'd be a good candidate to try and get in, get some experience. And, you know. What does he need for a licensing to be a uh, uh, Distribution one, distribution two, and treatment one. So if he passes distribution two, he's just going to take the treatment class and pass that test. Correct. Okay. okay. And then he needs to mm, kind, of, kind of grade to make sure that he has the, the knowledge and experience and ability to be that form. So, yeah, so you know, when I spoke with him, um, I did see, you know, suggest that we bring in an entry level position as a water repair man, let him finish getting licensed stuff, and maybe, you know, fast track at his pace. You know, we have to go from repair man to pump operator, start learning the system, get experience, and, you know, and then. Is he, he seem agreeable to that? Yes, yeah. He's very, very motivated, very driven, wants to work, wants to be part of the solution with everything. So that's. The kind of person to have in Yeah, he, he brings some um, the great experiences and knowledge that he's pretty really good to bring to the table. So, where do he live? Just for um, a, a he lives in Dartmouth, so it's approximately like a 30 30 minute ride from there. Mm -hmm. So, as I understand, no one could have seen the application and understand a little bit more. He had basically been discouraged by his current employment from taking anything more than the D1. Yeah, he he feels he's being held back. So I think mean, he wants to grow and learn and advance himself and better. Oh, no. So he's uh he's very anxious and eager to to better himself. Okay. Well, he's taking the initiative to you know it's the kind of people you want. And, and the good thing is he's interested. In, in advancing himself and that he has the experience as far as field work is concerned as far as the labor force and it, you know it adds that other laborer at some point that can fall into the system of you know we can cover it yeah sorry <laughs> does he seem to have leadership experience on what Yes, he 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 was a foreman in a, in a previous position he held. So running the street crew and doing yeah. the, you know running road jobs, doing yeah. water main repairs, fixing different types of emergency water repairs and stuff. So and that's that's what's great. He has that field experience, which mm -hmm. is great. Mm -hmm. You can learn the system as you as you go. You know, if you get good references to rely yeah. on for that. It sounds like if. Um... If he can pass the test, he'd be the ideal candidate because it's all the characteristics you're talking about, exactly what we're looking for. Yeah. So ho hopefully things will work out. And, you know, mm. well, you know it's, it's just trying to make things work. So wait we'll to hear back from him. Mm -hmm. But no, he's, he's, I think he'd be a, I think he'd be a good fit. I think he'd get along well with guys. So 
but that's all that I have. On the new big one, we have a memo from Keith Hickman dealing with the budget. So we have a little bit of an issue with the budget. So with that Smith Lane tank proposal, mm -hmm. and I were looking at things again. And I had reached out to Carol McCoy, the town accountant. Um, the $300,000 that we were going to ask for for the water tank maintenance program um, was going to be asked for out of operating revenue. And I wanted to touch base with her today to, or yesterday to find out like what the realistic percentages that could happen. Like we would have $300 in operating revenue to do that. And she told me it probably wasn't like it, it wasn't realistic. So she recommended that we hold off until fall when we get certified cash numbers from the state to kind of either ask for it then or wait till the spring. Um, right now in your packet, I put down the fee and the cost breakdown for our current OSG contract for our home street and Pembroke Street tank. And July 1, we're going to have um, a payment of $34,000 for Pembroke Street and $407,000 for Elm Street. That $407,000 of the $34,000 that we have to pay, we currently have in water tank maintenance funds. So that payment will be fine and covered. However, um, that will leave us with a total of um, $70,000 total left in all of our water tank funds. Um, so what we thought to do was to, we have um, some unfunded, or not, I'm uh, sorry, not unfunded, unexpended special article accounts that we could ask to repurpose at town meeting for water tank maintenance yeah, unexpended uh things we won't be correct okay so like, we should do that anyway like one of them was the stabilization of millgate we discussed millgate doesn't look like it's sinking anymore we put that money there to do some more work on it chris feels confident that it's not going to fall into so it just seems there. like that's something we should do anyway right so there's hundred and fifty two thousand dollars there then there's um an article for the 186 well cleaning pump replacement, which we just did, and we have about twelve thousand dollars left in there. There was a separate article that we went to Springtown meeting for last year for well cleaning pump replacement, with the intention of doing trackle pond well next. However, we have remaining money from the trackle pond filter um, that we can't give back to the state because the loan was already closed, so we have it. But it's site specific. We can only spend it on travel. Oh, okay. So we can pay for the well cleaning out of that. So take mm -hmm. that article and combine it. In. So if we did that, that would give us a total of 240000 plus the remaining 70000 And then um, our free cash that is already certified to spend was $97,000. Um, so we were going to pay for the building repairs out of that. And then there's the remaining $57,000 from that, that free cash. So all in all, we have about $297,000 um, for water tank maintenance going forward. We have one more big payment left on um, Pembroke Street, I think. No, Elm Street. And that's in 2026. And then once we get done with that big payment, it's more manageable. I think at that point, um, we'll have a better idea of all what our free, our certified free cash is for next year. And we can go forward with Smith's Lane then. I don't think we have the money right now to do Smith's Lane. I don't want to bank on something I don't know. I'd rather bank on something. I kind of approach this like my own household budget. <laughs> I don't have it, I can't spend it. So, so basically, we would take back 
$300,000 article that we asked FinCon to approve and Capital Fund to approve, and we would take back the $75,000 that we were asking for. And wait till the fall. Yeah. And what? if I remember right, the CG, when they looked at uh, Smith Lane, said that tank wasn't in really tough shape. So if we delay signing a contract with them for, in theory, a year, it shouldn't have major detrimental effects. I think I would agree with that. Um, I want to have this conversation yeah. before, and then I'll reach out to the USG, uh, uh, Kevin, USG. And, and, yeah. and see, you know, where we stand. You know, I think, and I don't think there's things that jump out as me is mm -hmm. like, this is going to be catastrophic. Um, right. And, you know, I think that there was, I think we get some wiggle room there as far as that go. Um, I don't know if we can be able to work something out with the USG to defray some of the costs a little bit further down to do that. I, that's something I'd have to approach yeah. them and talk yeah. about. Instead of the, what they're looking for up front, if we yeah. can defray some of that, to split that a little bit further down to, okay. to get the yeah. contract. Yep. Um, as long as the board's in agreement. I think we've been a good customer, so I well, we'll be surprised if they didn't go on. <clears throat> sure. We'll see. Hey, as call. long as it's not something that's catastrophic, we right. put off again. But if I remember right, they, they weren't that concerned with right. the existing condition of Smith Lane. No. Right. Yeah. You know, there's some, you know, graffiti and that type of stuff, but you don't have that anyway. So. Yeah. I just think, I think this is like the culmination of the economy. Yeah. And it's where and we've got the moratorium and the economy. And last year we did put $300,000 into water tank maintenance. We threw it into the Main Street water paint project. So, yeah. yeah. Kind of all these things are hitting us at yep. the same time. And wait for the fall for state numbers. Is that going to be some money that we're going to be certified free it? cash from mm -hmm. FY twenty? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. For twenty-four. Sorry. So we just postpone that. Then we're not voting on the issues right now. Isn't it the voters? Yeah, that mm -hmm. would be my recommendation. I, you know, yeah. I, I had yeah. put down on the agenda to. Mm -hmm both the acceptance of this contract but then when i looked at the numbers table to the fall i was like <laughs> you'll put you'll put together for the next meeting a more detailed uh analysis of what we're gonna roll and do yeah the budget. It. yeah it's a yeah. i yeah. think if we now that i know yeah. our okay. position so yeah. I, mean, I can reach out to usg and see if i can take and make things work okay. you know with that one yeah. they can it's be a process in the next meeting mm -hmm. And USG might yeah. say, yeah, we're, we're on board with mm -hmm. working with you in that sense to get this project to this contract started. Um, you know, they, they, were, they were concerned about some of the coatings, you know, reaching the end, yeah. end of life. Yeah. And I don't want to say, like, hey, look, you know, we've done some touch ups. You know, we can yeah. yeah. we, we do some spot touch ups to save this. Yeah. You know, right. Then, yeah. To, get to, to the fall. Yeah. Right. That's great. You know, you had a minimal expense and then do other stuff. So. If it doesn't make sense to you or you, you need anything clarified, just have to I think we're good. <laughs> and then I attached um, copies of the special articles and what was remaining the ones you can see. The Western and Samson well and pump maintenance inspection group. Do we have one of those done? Is this something new that we're going to get involved with Western and Samson? No, so that is um, typical routine maintenance that Weston Sampson comes out and performs. Uh, I believe typically that was like uh, done with Lane Christensen, and then they got absorbed by Weston Sampson. So Weston Sampson, they come out and they do the routine maintenance and um, service on the, the pump motors and the packing, the packing for the wells, oil changes on the, uh, the drives and the motors. Uh, they check, make sure everything is. The windings, they do winding tests and make sure that everything is still in the parameters that should be because those deficiencies that need to be addressed. So this is routine maintenance stuff that they get in touch with us with, and it's just time for that to be done. Mm -hmm. I think it was the Weston and Samson that grew us a little bit. Yes. Right. My concern was, and you know, is that you know, are we now bringing on another engineering firm that can do this work plus 
other potential work down the line uh, and sort of saying, does it make sense to go to a larger firm that may be able to do more? Where in fact, we have historically tried to keep the engineering, you know, focused on what the King's Water Department needs and not going to a broad-based engineering firm. Uh, you know, it wasn't Sampson a CDM or something like that. Yeah, you know, this, this, this Weston Sampson is an engineer. This is this is pump maintenance. They um, have like a different. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Different. They yeah, separated this, this them is, out as different. Uh, uh, thank, thank you for clarifying about this. Yeah. Is, this yeah. is yeah. an engineering yeah. stuff. Well, well, I'm using fire. As soon as I saw Weston Sampson, I said, we got That's really where I was going. Yeah, no, no, no. In a very gentle way. We don't need another engineering firm. No, Wes and Samson, uh, they came out, they did our uh, emergency motor replacement building. That's what okay. they do, both okay. pumps. They ran in line with um, Mark. Okay, we're good. Okay. Yeah, but how are these pumps compared to... Uh, I'm a lot better now. <laughs> no, 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 this is, this is um, I came with a... They have uh, a construction, um, too, that they call Wes and Samson, think CMR. Yeah, okay. this is this with Tom Hydro. The Tom Hydro we deal with the piece of water house to deal with for decades. You know, all the way back to Lane Christensen. I mean, he comes in, he you can talk to him on the phone, he knows the sites, he knows the pumps, he knows a little quarter of the things. Yeah. So he's it's, it's, yeah, it's they, a, they bought Bielmar too now. Yeah. So it's really just Weston Sampson and Bielmar. Yeah. 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 So it's really just Weston Sampson and Mar services that will serve the <laughs> South Shore. No, okay. Okay. Um, it's a, yeah. It's a pump, pump maintenance installation company, not a this is the engineering aspect of it. So, okay, but okay. you heard, I'm sure you've heard the name Tom Hydro before uh, yeah. over the years, but he comes out and does routinely. So, that's that's what this this means. Okay. <laughs> you had us all sort of scrambling my head for a while, but that's fine. No, unless. <laughs> Don't, 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 be, don't be misled by the name. No, you, we were. <laughs> At least I was. Um, next thing is the abatement uh, request for one. Mary the last Brooks. time you had recursive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Miss Mrs. Barry had a leak at her property, uh, apparently with her, her water tank or something. Underneath the cement slab, so she was unaware of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we sent her a letter, obviously, as we do everybody who has high usage to give them an alarm. So mm -hmm. that's what kind of stems the, the issue. Um, so she's asking for an abatement or help in this. She states that I'm not getting anything away, she just states mm -hmm. she's a 92 year old happy resident. <laughs> yeah. So, um her bill was significantly much higher than the bill. It was like four times the amount that she actually yeah. has. If you do it the lowest rate, does that that's the that's what that's what we're doing. Yeah, it'd be the total gallons at the lowest rate if that's what you guys. I move that we charge the total gallons at the lowest rate. Okay. So I second on that. Who second so voted to approve the abatement for another work for old? Okay. <clears throat> One question I do have to talk about that. Uh, stage coach, stage coach, do we have a leak in that area? Yes. And, and we found it and repaired it? We've just discovered what's going on there. We're working on a plan now to make that as yeah. that. It was an overgrown area that we had to kind of take back and get in there and we'll figure out what's going on and in the process of making a plan to get in and make that repair. So, thank you. The other thing that's in there is just, um, and I just threw it in there because it was, we had collected it since last meeting was just a request for review for comments for a kennel license on Home Street. I don't think it has really anything to do with water. We would have yeah. any reason to. One question. Five dollars. Is that any issues? I mean, it's not any. No, I guess in case sure. if you have more than, if you have five dogs, you have to have to have a kennel license, even if they're your own dog. Anything mm -hmm. over four. Yeah, I think it's over three or over four, four or more. Yes, that is. So if it doesn't bother you at all, we can just do a memo that no comment. No, 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 no,
But sure, there's other people who have a lot of interest in it. As long as there's no smoke, <laughs> smoke down the line, you know, it's okay. <laughs> Unfinished business, Keller. Anything more from them after our meeting? Nope. He was he had asked after that meeting for about two weeks to take and establish communication with his sister and get back to us. So um been graciously giving him that time to approach his sister with uh, our, our discussion and, and see how that panned out between him and his sister at this point. Uh, I know we don't like to talk about it, but we do need to move in some direction on that in a in a more expeditious manner um, without uh, getting unduly upset. We just can't continue to uh, allow the unanswered uh, questions as far as their uh, family issues are concerned to hold the entire town hostage until such time as they can resolve personal issues between brothers and sisters. It seems it's pretty close from what his impression of the you know, who knows yeah. what the probate's doing. It's in the court's hand the moment out there pushing anything. Yeah, Maybe we'll take that. another look in two weeks. Yeah, I, I think the the basis of the um, my meeting with him was that he just wanted to see what our position was to try and get a number to get a better idea of how to to, to, to deal with the rest of the, the, pro, the probate and the, the estate. So he has something to know what number of the way the town stands, uh, then he can bring that to the attorneys and get it resolved from there. And I think that's what the, the two week time was. So it gives him time to reach out to his attorney, to reach out to the estate and yeah. work on a resolve and then come back to us. If they want this done timely, they know what they need. And if they, if they don't, they push back, then we have other options. That's what we're yeah, and, and that was kind of made pretty clear mm -hmm. in our discussion that, you know, it's not the route we would prefer to take, but need be, we, we can go that route. Um, and he's he seen that he's, it's, it's, it's not, a, it's a quick little paperwork thing that's just getting drawn out you know, through the judicial system. So. Well, maybe in two weeks we'll have a better. I'm hoping. But I don't want to keep kicking his hand down the well, road. No. I don't think I want to kick it much past no. two weeks. I understand. Yeah. Because we've been we've been doing this for a long time and then it's it's time. If we get stuff we gotta do. There's not a lot of work to do once we get on the property, so we gotta get going. Right? There was a letter of appreciation. Did you all sign that? I did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, there's nothing else. A motion to adjourn. Oh, Stacy, just one question. Do you yes. know what time that hearing is tonight? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Yes. Um, and there was um, two emails that were sent over to me mm -hmm. earlier this afternoon from mm -hmm. Tricia that she received today from the attorney for PK Realty Trust in response to two letters that were written to them. And she said the water department comments were referenced as well. Mm -hmm. So. She just wanted you to have that if you were attending tonight. Um, that was the, the, the one that was yes. under the yep. Okay. So um, the war closes March 26th. So mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we are on board that the three unexpended articles you want me to write um, mm -hmm. in. Uh, yeah. no, to to reallocate those funds. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to pull the $300,000 request from operating revenue. and. The is it that that for the whole company? Yes. Yeah, we're gonna pull pull that All right, so we're not asking for we're just gonna reallocate funds for them. Just want to make sure we're all safe. Yes. Yep, thank you. Motion to adjourn. So move and second. Move second to so voted to adjourn. So fast mm -hmm. I can't even